As I plunge myself headfirst into the dark water that in my mind holds countless unimaginable horrors, I think back over the choices that led me here and the decisions that I made. I'm not talking about in the game, yes, Kaz does that too, but I'm talking about in life. I studied business, my plan was to be a yuppie, and yet now, here I am, cacking my shorts while I swim through a dimly lit oil rig somewhere off the coast of Scotland, trying not to drown, explode, and or... There's a tranquility to it though, outside of the moments of tension and chaos, a beautiful isolation, alone with your thoughts. The ocean. The ability to just look inwards, to take a breath and reflect. Meditation in its purest form, stress-free, unbothered, uh, moisturized, happy, on my rig, focused, flourishing. <sighs> this is Still Wakes the Deep. All of our reviews try to be as light as they can on the spoiler side of things, but I just wanted to take a moment for this one and say I've done my best to make sure that this one goes a step above. Subtitles are turned off during the important parts, there's a bug that makes them turn on so I couldn't keep them off the whole time. Most of the footage is walking around and or interacting with things. I've hidden what the horror in this game is as best as I can so you can watch it without ever knowing what the deep holds much as I can promise that if you're still worried then by all means just listen don't watch and I hope you enjoy if you were looking to make a horror game set on a Scottish oil rig there aren't many better options than a studio with amnesia experience led by a Scotsman and that's what you have with the Chinese room's latest soiree into the genre with still wakes the deep first person non-combat classic horror goodness in waves Still Wakes the Deep has those old school style vibes presented in a fresh new shell, like a kinder egg if it was filled with unspeakable horror or wasps. The premise, the concept, and the design are all stellar. There are scant locations I can think of that better encapsulate the intent of horror than being alone on an oil rig. It's isolation on top of isolation, and the game uses it to every effect. You're alone, climbing around the fragile edges of the rig, simply striving for survival. Eventually, you might get that respite and the warmth of finding another person. But to what end? They can't help you. You're still stuck on an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. They can help slow your heartbeat, the safety and comfort found in hearing another voice, sure, but the knowledge that the briefest of moments you might still meet your maker, the tension, the dread, it's still there. That external pressure just at the edges, the uncomfortable feeling. While streaming this game, one of the things I spoke about was the trope of unluckiest man has unluckiest day. That is incredibly common in horror. A bad situation is happening, but while trying to deal with that situation, bad things keep happening on top of the bad thing. Like a lasagna of misery. The Listo Protocol is pretty egregious at this, it's the king of rug pulling for the sake of padding. Horror games are meant to give the air of hopelessness, the struggle, but the intent should be that it's encapsulated by the goal you're trying to achieve, not arbitrarily at every step on the route to the goal. Still Wakes the Deep swims in that hopelessness. It understands how to frame it. You're given an objective and your goal is just get there. No trick. And that's the beauty in the simplicity of Still Wakes the Deep. A simplicity that I can understand some people will bounce off of. You see, Still Wakes the Deep is a linear, non-combat story game. Boiled down, you're walking, sneaking through areas, interacting with objects, and trying not to die. The story itself, if you strip away the oil rig, is a horror classic as well. Bad choices in the past led someone to a location where they seek to be better, 
and then realization occurs. Yeah, I'm being vague for the sake of spoiler avoidance. I, I get it, I hope you appreciate it. Kaz leaves his family after assaulting a man to go to an oil rig for a few months so it cools down. There's traditional horror character values you should be used to in this, and the overall story follows a traditional line, and that's the bounce off. It would be easy to see a linear walking simulator here. There's a classic story as well. If that's a concern, I'd advise Game Pass, so you can dip your toe in this and judge for yourself because it's worth seeing. It might have traditional underpinnings, but the new setting of the oil rig being used to tell a classic story for me works because I'm a sucker for that kind of atmosphere, and integrating the horror themes that it runs with are something that just speaks to me on a core feral level. Still Weeks the Deep at times gives up on the notion of how do we escape this situation, and pivots to simply, uh, how do we survive this situation? Those two were normally hand in hand in games, skipping down the corridor towards the finale. We survive by escaping. It's easier that way. So it's refreshing to see an approach that separates those concepts. You can't escape an oil rig if it falls into the sea. You stabilize the situation, then assess our escape. A, then B. Oil rigs are complicated things. They don't just exist, they need maintaining. And as he's going to remind you several times while playing this game, Kaz is good with the lecky. And let's talk about the rig. Each section of it feels polished and considered for the purpose it's meant to serve. The deck with its mixture of open areas and shipping containers means that even with all that space and a sky above you, you're not safe. The false sense of security, notions of a breath of fresh air bringing respite until you gaze out upon the wreckage and other things. Beneath that you have the walkways and the catwalks that underpin the deck narrow, bare metal structures, the ocean below calling to you as you have to creep your way around the edge of the outside of the oil rig, just hanging onto beams and bars waiting for one false move before you succumb to the deep below. And if you do find a door, it's not much better inside. You're greeted by function over form. That beautiful exposed pipes industrial aesthetic plays wonderfully with darkened corridors and flashlights. Pipes casting shadows, hiding secrets. The interior is filled with tight claustrophobic spaces to squeeze through. Pipes that enclose you while giving you the delightful ability to see what waits for you on the other side. Oh, and don't even get me started on whatever this therapist's wet dream is. Every aspect of Still Wakes the Deep feels like thought was put into it, from the larger design of the oil rig itself and the oppressively miserable Scottish weather, to the enemy and the way... Every aspect of Still Wakes the Deep feels like thought was put into it, from the larger design of the oil rig itself and the oppressively miserable Scottish weather and the thing that's going on, giving you this wonderful petrol effect around the edge of your vision whenever things are getting a little bit too weird. It's all planned out. And then you've got smaller details like magazines that are very obviously hitting that 70s aesthetic, the shipping forecast, the food schedule of the week being wonderful Scottish food. There's even a Gaelic localization that's accompanied by an achievement. There is polish in every aspect that shows, and the sound design as well is something that just helps the game excel. That noise in the distance going to help or hurt. But there is a flaw though, a crack in that veneer that just brings it down a tiny bit. If the wording on this next part feels too vague, I can only apologize. Like I said, above and beyond to avoid all spoilers, I think you'll get it though. There's a linearity and formulaic approach to certain aspects of the game that, while not a game breaker, if you notice it, changes things. Like seeing the wizard behind the curtain, the puppet master and the doo 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 string doesn't ruin anything, as the score about to appear on the screen will show, but it does detract. I want to discuss more about that, but I can't without spoilering really important things. I don't know, maybe if we had a podcast I could. I'm sure I'll mention it in a random later video though, so hey, if you see this one and you watch one in like six months, you'll be able to do the pointing at the screen being like, I get that. How does that leave it? Well, our playthrough of Still Wakes the Deep took just under eight hours and has a price tag of £30 or exchange rates. During our playthrough, we obtained 22 out of the 37 available achievements without really going looking for them. 
You could knock them all out in one playthrough if you check some beforehand, as they require you to die in certain ways. So if you play through without dying, you'll miss them. Also, don't forget that there's one requiring the Gaelic language selection in the menu. Oh, and the game's on Game Pass, which is a plus. Still Weeks the Deep gets our highest score yet in 2024. It's stellar. It's a true horror classic that uses the themes and history it's taking from and puts them in a new setting that works perfectly. And I'm honestly surprised it hasn't been done before. The story-driven and linear narrative of the game might be a detractor for some, but it serves a purpose like most other aspects of the game and helps go towards building one of the best experiences I've had so far this year. Hey, if you like that video, then, you know, there's buttons that do things like leaving words and, you know, I'm not your dad, I can't tell you what to do, but maybe you should wash your hands? When was the last time you did that? They're probably filthy. Also, the algorithm has picked a video for you.